Welcome back. Invasive species are flying, crawling, and slithering their way across many parts of the world, leaving behind a path of destruction and a massive financial toll. Dan Riskin investigates the uphill battle to keep intrusive alien animals out of Canada. If you thought 2020's murder hornet headline sounded bad, Washington state officials found this nest with 500 of the venomous insects near Blaine. They are just a drop in the bucket. From wild pigs and humans clashing in Europe, to news of a massive, aggressive python hybrid lurking in the swamps of Florida. Invasive species are costing us billions while changing the very face of nature itself. One invasive species has already become a nightmare in the southern U.S. A series of horses were found with slash marks, in some cases resulting in death. We have seen them wreak havoc in neighborhoods. But now the wild pigs have attacked a human. Yes, from horse slashings in South Carolina to a human killed in Texas, wild pigs are to blame. Saskatchewan is in its own war with invasive hogs, trying to ensure those horrors don't happen here. And this is the front line. Wild pigs are easily the worst invasive large mammal on the planet. Ryan Brook is an associate professor at the University of Saskatchewan. He oversees a program tracking wild pigs, a problem that's been on his radar for years. A lot of people said, well, they'll never survive a cold Canadian winter, especially on the prairies. Domestic wild boar crossed with a domestic pig actually results in a bigger animal. We often call them super pigs because they're so well adapted. Wild European boars were imported to Saskatchewan in the 90s as a new livestock for farmers. But some got loose and bred with escaped local pigs. That created a hybrid wild pig that is hardy and huge. The biggest one we've handled in our team was 638 pounds, so oh. just shy of 300 kilos, which is absolutely massive. There are records of a few animals in the U.S. that are probably north of 1,000 pounds. Wow. One of the most destructive and fastest spreading invasive species in the world, wild pigs, have taken over streets from Barcelona, where singer Shakira claims two wild pigs destroyed her bag, to Hong Kong, where this monster was seen feeding from a garbage bin. For Ryan, wild pigs moving into Canadian cities is a real fear. Today, he and his team are aiming to fit them with tracking collars. Snatching them with net guns. What makes them dangerous? They seem elusive and they avoid people a lot, but when they're cornered or if they're feeling concerned, they will all of a sudden turn from meek and mild to very, very aggressive and they will attack. Their razor sharp tusks are their main weapon and those teeth are rubbing against each other constantly just going like this and those leading edges are just self sharpening. So basically like four steak knives. But Ryan's team needs to tag them to find out where they're going. Because Ryan's research isn't funded by Ottawa, it's funded by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Why is the U.S. Department of Agriculture funding Canadian research on Canadian pigs? The U.S. really realizes that there's a major threat of Canadian pigs moving south into the northern U.S. states right now. Border states like Montana are keeping an eye on what they call northern invaders something Ryan has been calling on Ottawa to do for more than a decade. When did you sound the alarm to Ottawa and to the provinces that pigs are a problem and we need to deal with it now? Well, that really started through 2010 and 2011. We reached out to various governments and, and rural municipalities saying this is an emerging threat. But as numbers grew, Ryan was still denied funding. Now, there are more than 5,500 wild pigs in Canada half in Saskatchewan. It's been absolutely frustrating knowing that the time frame is so limited 
And early on, people said, Ryan, can we eradicate these? And my response consistently was, absolutely, but the window for that is closing very quickly. Has it closed now? It is absolutely closed now. They're here to stay for the next thousand years. But when it comes to invasive species that are here to stay, one U.S. location tops them all. This is the U.S. state most plagued by invasive species. Florida is now home to more than 500 non-native plant and animal varieties. And it's no wonder. Subtropical climate, plenty of seaports and airports, lots of exotic animal farms. It's no wonder this ocean state has been called the Jurassic Park of exotic species. This park near Vero Beach, Florida, is a permanent home to several species. We take in exotic animals that people cannot handle anymore, and they spend the rest of their lives out here with us. Want to come out here and have some nice? Assistant Director David Hahn welcomes all of them, including invasives, like this tegu lizard, a species originally from South America. So how did this end up here? This was a surrender by its owner to us because they couldn't handle it anymore. It was too uh, getting too big for its tank. So is this something that happens a lot as people buy these pets when they're smaller and then they realize that- Exactly, it... exactly. Or they get away from them because these aren't exactly the most cuddliest pet to have. They'll um, eat almost anything they can get their mouths around and can grow up to a meter and a half long. So stopping them in the wild isn't easy. In fact, they have problems with these already in the Everglades and south of here. Florida's Everglades are the wild west of massive invasive species. The Burmese pythons here can grow longer than six meters. How do you eradicate an animal that can eat an alligator? A few courageous men and women are working to find and remove this invasive species. State-sanctioned hunts have tried to make a dent. Coming out. But the invasive species game is one of constant right. catch-up. If I need a hand, I'll, I'll let you know. Those relatively small but aggressive Burmese pythons right, now join their invasive cousins, the much bigger African rock pythons, also loose in the Everglades. How big exactly? He's about 40 pounds, and he's extremely strong and he's got a real nasty disposition, so. When you say nasty, would it ever try to attack you? Oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. He's trying to break loose right now and take a bite out of me. <laughs> and so was this snake brought in this big? Or? No, no, this came in. This was relinquished by its owner to us. Uh, the thing was probably about two feet long at the time. And uh, they, they really didn't know what they had. The worst case scenario is for people to simply let their pets loose when they get too big or ornery. In fact, that happens so often that Florida has started an amnesty program so people can turn in their illegal pets without getting in trouble. These guys can get up to 18 feet. Have you ever had the experience of one of these trying to wrap itself around you? Oh yes, like right now. <laughs> we'll be good. To make matters even worse, there's genetic evidence that some of these different snake species have started hybridizing here. So Florida may soon be dealing with super snakes. And now the offspring becomes a giant aggressive snake. Oh yeah, that's a lot of animals. And those are the animals that are taking out the indigenous animals of the state of Florida. That's something. Coming up. We got them. The mounting cost of an unstoppable pest. They undermine sidewalks, seawalls, housing foundations. When W5 continues. It's a battle. <laughs> to control invasive species like wild pigs and Burmese pythons. Yes, sir. It's also expensive. Over about 50 years, the world has spent more than a trillion and a half dollars to detect, prevent, and control invasive species. When it comes to biological invaders, Florida is king. 
facing a price tag of nearly $4 million every year. And wildlife trapper Mike Kimmel like that boy. knows that wild kingdom up close and personal. Lucky you're a little slow today. Like this big white-throated monitor. Normally found in Southern Africa, it hasn't taken over here yet. And that's why it was so important for me to go and capture this guy when I heard about him to prevent a breeding population from starting. But this is the species that has taken over Southern Florida, the green iguana. We got him. Good one. Wow. This looks like a uh, good sized female here. And to me, she looks like she may be gravid, um, which means she's full of eggs. Really? So that, that's an extra good win for us. This pest problem started with the release of a few hundred pet iguanas in the 1960s. Now, there are thought to be more than 20,000 thriving in this subtropical climate. Mike, I can understand why a python is a bad invasive species, because it eats everything. But iguanas are vegetarian, so why are they a problem? The real big deal is the burrows they dig. They undermine sidewalks, seawalls, housing foundations, the levee embankments that our canals use to stretch throughout the state. Right now, we're not in a swamp because of those canal systems. The nearby city of West Palm Beach recently spent more than $2 million repairing damage done by iguanas like these. So. Local governments pay trappers, like Mike, to try and keep the population in check. Like at this pond, which looks pretty iguana-free, until you look closely. Here we go. There's one right there. See him? So, I offered to lend a hand. You want to grab this one? Yeah, I'd love to. So what do I do? So what you're going to want to do is try to pin those back legs to its tail. In case it is a little lively, you can't scratch it. I wouldn't approach it super quick. Take your time getting to it. And then when you're close enough to be able to grab it, shoot in and grab it like you mean it. OK. You got this. Nicely done. Like a true professional. Look at that. So another female. Let's take a look at it. Ah. Yep, looks like another female. <laughs> yep, which is very good. She won't be laying eggs this season, and uh, you know it'll benefit the ecosystem in our state. Sharp. Their nails are extremely sharp. Does it bite? Does it scratch? How does um, it defend itself? Normally, their first defense is going to be to tail whip or to scratch you. They will bite though, and generally when they bite, they almost seem to lock on, and a lot of times I gotta get something to pry their mouth open and get them off me. Although, when it's unseasonably cold, that makes Mike's job much easier. Another one down. It's gotta be about six degrees Celsius. This is not typical Florida weather. No, it is not. The big drop in temperature here makes for some odd headlines. As you can see right here, it almost makes him look like they're dead. He's actually asleep right now, kind of in almost a coma-like state. But if we were to warm him up, he would come back to life and most likely try to scurry off. Most invasive species come from warm climates, which means any place with year-round sunny skies is ripe for invasion. That's why Australia is in such a fight. Rabbits brought by the British in the 18th century, now eat more than $1,100 million worth of crops every year. So the government has unleashed a virus into the wild population, but even that hasn't stopped them. And Northern Australia has so far allotted more than $400 million to kill off fire ants that came from South America. It's not enough either. And then there's the cane toad. They were intentionally introduced in 1935 to eat invasive beetles that were destroying Australia's sugarcane crops. But despite their name, the cane toads couldn't make it up the sugarcane plants to reach the beetles. So instead, they've eaten everything else and wreaked havoc on Australia's ecosystems. Not all invasive species are bad, though. They mainly just eat bugs but they make really cool pets, kids love them. 
Veiled chameleons are native to the Arabian Peninsula, but now live all over Florida. I'll usually go out, try to get 10, 20, even 30 at a time in a night, and I actually rehome these guys and sell them as pets. And while relatively harmless, chameleons are legal pets in Florida. And so is this. Oh, how did it come to my house? The Asian Water Monitor. This nearly two meter long one crashed a backyard, forcing homeowners to abandon their yard for three weeks before it was caught. These prehistoric looking creatures will eat any animal they can get their teeth into, but aren't yet considered invasive. So if someone in Florida did really want one, they could legally buy it online and have it shipped to their front door. Oh my God. Government legislation could help in the battle against invasive pests, including those normally camera shy wild pigs. This group was seen wandering a Toronto suburb, but there the province has stepped in. Ontario has uh, quite a number of occurrences of wild pigs and they've done a great job of responding. Ontario has now banned wild boar farms, a big step in preventing more pigs from getting loose and quickly taking over. It's something Ryan Brook applauds. Without a strategy, any chance of success with pigs would be absolutely zero. Based in Saskatchewan, the wild pig hotspot of Canada, Ryan started raising the alarm more than a decade ago. This feels a lot like studying Sasquatch. We would talk about it and people would kind of smile and kind of go, yeah, right, they're not, they're not out there. Nobody's seeing them. And of course, that is one of their major problems is out of sight, out of mind out of sight in the day. But night vision reveals them scavenging for food, leaving torn up farmer's fields in their wake. In the US, hunting them has become a tourism industry. That might seem like a perfect solution, but Ontario has made that illegal for a very good reason. When wild pigs are exposed to hunting, they flee into new areas and learn to avoid humans. They're also quick to reproduce and populations are known to rebound exponentially. In South Florida. You know, I've got a lot of pigs out here. You can see where they're running through along the ditch. Marshall Locker is looking to implement a different solution because it's not just land that wild boars destroy. Pigs will destroy four out of five ground nesting bird nests. Although he can't spot any animals. Out there, especially this out front here. For Marshall, the destruction wild pigs have left is as plain as day. It would have took one to five pigs, maybe somewhere around an hour or less to do this. But this damage goes all the way down that way. Marshall's an expert in wild hog control, and he's seen the damage they cause when they tear up farmland, rooting for anything they can devour. On Farmlands in the U.S., the damage that they cause is $2.5 billion. That's billion with a B. What Marshall hopes is a solution is actually pretty simple. So that's the trap. And why isn't it made of metal? The pigs don't break their face when they're slamming into the side of them and they're freaked out. It acts as a trampoline, sort of tossing them back. But so how do the pigs get into this? It works off of their natural rooting response. That's how they forage and their nose is to the ground. They're pushing dirt up. Although the forage here is anything but natural. Are these cupcakes? Yes, sir, it's cupcakes, cream cheese, and a cake. Pigs have a sweet tooth. And once night fell, the hogs just couldn't resist it. But this success is just a drop in the bucket. To maintain the current population that we have in the US, we should be trapping and euthanizing 70% of the current population. And we're right now somewhere around 30%. Australia has come up with a creative but time-consuming solution to their surprising invasive species. That country has the most wild camels in the world. Brought in as transport for European explorers, 
They now number more than 300,000. Some are being trained to work with humans, then shipped to the United Arab Emirates where they occur naturally. Popular uses there include camel beauty contests. Yes, that's really a thing, where a beautiful camel, judged a perfect 10, can sell for up to $10 million. And in New Hampshire, a distillery is trying to make a dent in the population of an invasive pest that's been plaguing North America's marine ecosystems for more than 200 years. They're making whiskey flavored with green crabs. The world will need many, many more innovative solutions to get rid of pesky species. Otherwise, all of these problems will end up in the hands of wildlife trappers like Mike, legally mandated to shoot invasive species like this gorgeous green iguana as battle lines are pushed in the war against invasive species. The experts are pretty clear that hunting wild pigs is not a solution. It just makes them more elusive. Despite that, Alberta has brought in a bounty for wild boar. So far, it's been a bust. Not one has been captured in five months of the program.